Welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Our mission is to share what we have learned from our experience and the experience of others to help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate the Discount Property Investor way. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit FreeWholesaleCourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. Thanks for tuning in. Good afternoon, Mike. Good afternoon, Dave. How are you, buddy? Doing good, man. Excited to start uh, talking about what is wholesaling. We're going to back to basics today and just going to talk a little bit about wholesaling in general. Hopefully cover, uh, run the gamut here, right? That's right. That's right. Awesome. So what is wholesaling is our topic today. Man, we've been wholesaling for five years at this point. About five four or five years together yeah like, give or yeah. take man it's been a minute and yeah. uh, we've done hundreds and hundreds of deals yeah i think we've done over 400 or 500 in our so i think it's close CRM. to closer to 500 yeah, yeah. i don't but, I, again i don't really keep track of it that right. closely we've got it in our crm we can pull up that data but yeah we've done it hundreds of times um so let's just quickly define what it is that we're doing what is wholesaling dave wholesaling to me or at least the way that i define it is buying a house at a really, really good price and selling it at a good price. So again, you're going to sell it at a, or you're buying it at a great price, sell it at a good price. Mm. And you, as a wholesaler, are kind of in the middle and you make a profit on the difference between those two prices. Yep. How, how would you define it? What's your, so what's I would your say there's a couple thing? of things that I would add though. So you don't have to buy. That's the beautiful thing about wholesaling. Um, I would define wholesaling as a marketing business where you use contracts to, to control properties so then you can then sell them for profits without even having to buy. I know that's kind of a muddy explanation. Well, it is. It's a little bit, and it's it's very accurate. It's just a little bit higher level, so it's a little bit more complicated for somebody who hasn't done it before to maybe understand. Yeah, absolutely. Because what Dave is getting at, and it's very very true, is that we, when I say buy, I mean go and put a contract on a house. So uh, let's use an example here. So we've got an A B sell, or we've got a seller. We we define it as a motivated seller. Let's call him uh, seller. So seller says, hey, I've got this house and I really, really, really need to sell it. Can you help me? You come in, you're going to be wholesaler. And wholesaler says, yes, I can buy it. I'm going to put it under contract for $50,000. And now I'm going to go uh, do my due diligence and I'm going to get bring it to the title company to find out if there's any liens against it, et cetera, et cetera. Then wholesaler says, okay, well, I don't actually want to buy this house, but I know somebody else who does. So they go to buyer, let's call them buyer again at the very end of the deal. And they say, hey, I would like to sell this house to you for 50 or say $60,000. Okay, so so wholesaler is buying it from seller for 50000 and they are selling it to buyer for $60,000. So that's a $10,000 spread between those two properties. So I don't know if that's going to zoom in on that or not. Eh, we'll give it a try. <laughs> Okay, so you've got uh, a spread on the house. So then what Dave is talking about with the contracts and controlling it is, as the wholesaler, I'm not actually going to go to the title company oftentimes. I'm going to assign my interest in that contract to buyer. So buyer then just comes in with his 60000 to the title company, and that assignment costs that buyer $10,000, and that fee went to you wholesaler. So that's kind of what Dave is saying. And again, I just um, I like to use the terminology buy, even though it may not be accurate. If you don't, if you truly assign the contract, you're not buying it. Uh, if you do go through and do a double close and buy it and sell it on the same day, you are buying it. So there is uh, definitely a terminology thing there. Yeah, absolutely. So you're buying it and selling it. However, you don't need any money. And that's one of the cool things about wholesaling is you can limit your risk to practically zero. Because you have a lot of outs in your contract for mm -hmm. one, right? And for two, uh, you can sell your contract to purchase. You don't ever ex you don't have to absolutely execute it. Instead, you can just sell it. 
and get paid for it. So that's that's really what wholesaling is. Um, yes, you are buying and selling, but you're using contracts to control it so you don't have to purchase. There you go. That's the word. You don't have to purchase it. However, you can still buy it, right? And then you're selling that contract or you're double closing on it. So that's what wholesaling is in a nutshell. That's kind of the way that we would define it. I would say the the main things to understand and learn when it comes to wholesaling. This is very important. Right? Is um, you don't need a lot of money, if any, right? Because you're using contracts to control property. That's that's the main thing. But, 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 but how do you do that? And this is where I'm going to pivot here. But the, this, this business, the wholesaling business, is a marketing business. That's what I was going to say is very important. Right. Because it, it's not necessarily about real estate investing at this point. At this point, you're learning about real estate investing. You're learning how to find deals. And you're learning how to find um, – uh, sellers or buyers, rather. So you're learning both of those things. But what you're doing to accomplish that is marketing. So it is the marketing business. And this is one of the things that I've, I've always harped on is that it does not matter what business you're in, you're in the business of marketing. So again, the wholesaling business is a marketing business, just like any other. And our product is houses. So you are finding or discounted houses is your product. You're finding deals on discounted prop, uh, properties. So, Dave, uh, that is, um, again, I think a very important thing that a lot of people don't quite understand uh, when they come to us to start out. They say, well, I'm, I thought I'm an investor. I'm trying to buy houses. It's like, yes, you are. You have to know a lot about houses to do that, but you have to know even more about marketing and finding motivated sellers. Absolutely. 100%. So, three pillars, Dave. This is one of the things you um, always <laughs> kind of talk about when it comes mm -hmm. to wholesaling. Go into go into the three pillars, man. What are the three pillars of wholesaling? So there's three pillars that I like to, to kind of look at when I'm talking about wholesaling, and and I I like to look at them like a like a stool, you know, not pillars like you'd find out in front of a, a building, right? Instead, these are these are three pillars like a stool, right? So if one of the three pillars or legs of your stool, you know, were to be removed, that stool's not going to stand up anymore. So the stool represents the wholesaling business or your business. And in order for your business to be successful and to make money and not fall over or go out of business, there's three things that you have to do consistently. And it's really this simple when it comes to wholesaling. So the three pillars are one, marketing, two, making offers, and three, following up. And it's it's that simple. So we're going to break these down really quickly and talk about why each is so important. Uh, but again, we defined wholesaling. It's buying and selling properties with little to none of your own money, using contracts to control the property so you can buy it without purchasing it. I think we've defined that pretty good at this point, right? Um, so how do you do that? Well, that's why the, that's where the three pillars come in. So how do you do that? Well, A, you understand that this is a marketing business, not a real estate investing business. You be, it, it pivots into a real estate investing business when you buy it to rent it out or to fix it up and flip it. But if you're wholesaling, you're not taking any risk. Therefore, there's not really an investment being made. It's a marketing play. So number one, the first pillar, marketing. Mm -hmm. You have to market to motivated sellers. That's the first pillar. Okay. Now, anything in real estate, when it comes to, to buying a property, you, you always want to try to find a deal. You want to buy at a discount. Really? Okay. So let's take a step back from wholesaling for just a minute. If you don't have a deal on a property, the door for a fix and flip is closed to you. The door to add it to your rental portfolio without leaving a ton of money in it is closed to you. Wholesaling that deal is closed to you, right? Not, oh, 100%. You can't do anything. 100%. You can't do anything if you don't have a deal unless you're paying cash, right? Or you're willing to leave a lot of money if, all, if not all of the money needed in it, okay? So 
Taking a step back from well, wholesaling for just a second. But that's, you, we're talking about creating wealth through yeah, real estate. Exactly. So the only way to do that, like Dave said, is having a good deal. Having a deal. Again, if you're trying to, and Dave and I talk about this a lot, if you're trying to park cash, it's a totally different type of investing. Absolutely. You're investing at that point. You're not marketing. Right. So again, if you're trying to build wealth or create wealth, it's totally different. You need to have good deals on these properties. Absolutely. Love it. So how do you find a deal so all those doors can open? That's the beautiful thing about finding deals is that you can cherry pick them if that's your play. If you don't even want to be a wholesaler, cool. No problem. I get it. But you still need to learn how to find a deal. And that's where wholesaling comes in. It's marketing. You got to learn how to market. So the first pillar is marketing. And the marketing that we do is marketing to motivated sellers, typically, or it can be blanket marketing. But it's the intention of it, though, the purpose is to find a deal. Okay? Now, once you have a deal, you now have open doors. All the doors open for you. Look at this. You can wholesale it, which is what Mike and I would probably prefer to do. Or you can keep it and fix it up. Now there's a margin to be made. There's a profit because you got a deal. Or you can add it to the rental portfolio, maybe use an advanced strategy like the Burr strategy or go get a loan to where you don't have to have a bunch of money in it. But again, you got to start with the deal. So the marketing, I think, is the first most important thing to, to learn and understand, and it's the first pillar. Because if you don't have a deal, nothing else matters. And specifically when it comes to wholesaling, Mike started out, the first thing he said was, you buy great and you sell good. You can't sell good if you didn't at least buy it good, mm -hmm. right? So that simple spread in between is what you can make as a wholesale fee. You buy great. It's worth 150 You pay 80 and you sell it to somebody else at 90 doesn't matter what the repairs are. Keep it simple. That's a deal, right? But you left a lot of meat on the bone and it's still a good deal at 90 You just got it at a great deal at 80 Very simple. So... The, the you know deals can fall into your lap but it's rare that that's going to happen so you got to get out and you have to market to these people to let them know that you have a service to offer them which is basically 10,000 foot view we provide liquidity to the real estate market that's all we do as wholesalers we trade convenience in exchange for a discount and we're liquidity makers it's convenience that's it but you have to be able to tell these people that you have this convenience by marketing your message to them or trading your time to reach out to them directly. But that's it. That's marketing. That's the first pillar. Mm -hmm. Mike, Agreed. you want to talk about the second pillar? Sure. The second pillar of wholesaling, making offers. Love it. So, And this is as important as the first pillar. These all are equal. This is a stool. Look at it like a triangle, exactly. right? You need all three. Baby. If one of these stops or lags, your business will stop or lag. Love it. 100%. So making offers, why is that one of the pillars of wholesaling, one of the three pillars in our world? Because if you're not making offers, you are not going to get properties under contract, period. So we have- What good is the first pillar of marketing to motivated sellers- if you don't make any offers. If you make zero offers, you are going to get zero properties under contract and you are throwing away your marketing dollars. Right. You are not going to so make any So do money. you guys realize that we skipped over like how to analyze a property and you know uh, how to determine repairs? Those things aren't important right now. We're big picture what this business is. Yes, you're going to need to learn those things. We're going to teach those things to you in future podcasts and courses and whatever else, right? But the pillars is what we're talking about today. So marketing is number one, making offers. Mike, go ahead. Number two. Yeah, making offers. It's it's that important to the business. And what we mean by making offers, it doesn't have to be a written contract every single time. Dave and I, we send text offers. Again, we go to a property uh, or, or somebody calls in from our marketing efforts and they say, here's what I've got, yada, yada. We say... If it's not one that we're really that interested in, we'll say, okay, well, what can you take for it? Or what do you, what do you want for the property? And we'll make an offer on the phone right then. So we'll say, yeah, we could probably do about five to 10,000 on that one. So again, this is maybe one of our North City deals. 
Why would we give a range? Because we don't know exactly what we can do. We're making an offer. It's a verbal offer to that person day one. And if they are motivated, five to $10,000 doesn't sound like a lot, but if they're motivated, that might be the right number for this not so great property. Then it's a deal that we might be able to make some money on. I know Dave, uh, we just did a deal. We bought for, what was it like $4,000 and we sold for $8,000. Yeah, 45 and 9. 45, exactly, 4,500 and 9. Mm-hmm. So again, if some if you give a range like that, ah, I can probably do three to 5,000 on this house, then you you know you're in the right ballpark if that person says, okay, yeah, that might work. Then I'll say, okay, I'll drive out there. But I'm not trying to drive out there if they're not interested. So again, you have to make an offer to even get to that point. So even though it was a house that we wouldn't want, that we don't even really want to go drive to, we're still making offers on them. Absolutely. Because we would not have made that profit so, if we didn't make that offer. I'm going to, yeah, so so look at the big picture here. In order to make a profit, let's let's just reverse engineer a successful wholesale deal, Mm -hmm. right? Reverse engineer. The last thing is taking the profit. Well, before that happens, you have to close on it with both a seller and a buyer, right? And before you do that, you have to find a buyer. Well, before you do that, you need a property from a motivated seller. So nothing else can and will happen. It won't happen if you don't have a property under contract. So how do you get a property under contract so you can then go sell it? You got to make an offer on it, right? So we've just reverse engineered an entire deal. So if you're not making offers, it is impossible to do a wholesale deal. It's that important. If you want to do a deal... You need to be making offers. If you want to do more deals, then you need to be making more offers. But it is truly that important that we've labeled it a pillar of this business because, again, if you aren't doing that, nothing else matters. And if you're doing a lot of marketing but not making offers, you're just spinning your tires. Well, I think, Dave, the three pillars come back to the fact that we've gone, we've had our up and downs in this business, and every time – that we see that we are uh, in a slump or in a down, we're not doing as well, it's because we're neglecting one of these three things. That's right. We're either not making enough, uh, we're not putting enough marketing out there. Which could, which effort. is either efforts or a budget. It could be both. We're not making enough offers. Or number three, Dave, what are we not doing? So the last third final pillar is just following up. And there's no like secret sauce. To wholesaling. That's the that's the crazy thing. It's these three things that are the most important. There is a lot of little things that we are going to cover in future podcasts yeah, we absolutely can. and whatnot. But these are the things that have to be done routinely, consistently, and persistently if you want to have a successful business and or just want to do your first deal. Yeah, this to me is like a back to basics on on wholesaling, the three pillars. It, it, it is so simple, um, but it's just it's always where the system breaks down. It's in one of these three things. You're not marketing enough, you're not making enough offers, and you're not following up with your previous contacts. Mm-hmm. Because, again, if you spent money on marketing and, again, you made an offer and they said, ah, nah, if you don't follow up with that person three months later, six months later, nine months later, 12 months later – you are never going to get that deal when their motivation level changes. That's right. So again, it's just the, it's the basics of I would say sales almost. Well, or- another way, I, you know, I said if you are doing marketing and you're not making offers, you're spinning your tires. Yeah. I'm going to use work. that exact same analogy, and I'm going to add it. Now it's number three. So follow up. If you are marketing and making offers but not getting contracts, and you're not following up, you are also spinning your wheels, right? All three things need to happen. Now, Mike and I are in the Midwest. We've done eh, 500 wholesale deals, give or take, over the last five years as you know, combined as a company. And we have about five years of data. I would consider us to be experts having five years and 500 houses. So the data that we have is basically tells us that the average deal takes us four to six months. Now, it doesn't mean that every deal takes that long. The average deal takes four to six months. 
The reason is, is because when we first make contact with the motivated sellers or seller, we always try to make the offer because it's the other pillar, one of the pillars. We always make the offer. My VA made a couple offers this morning while I was on my way to work, and he texted me and he said, what do you think? And I said, hey, they're too high, but I'm just happy you made offers. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even care that these are too high. You made them. This is amazing. I had five offers made before I even got to the office today. Okay? So you got to make those offers, and you got to follow up. But the purpose of what I'm getting at with the follow-up is it takes us four to six months to close a wholesale deal typically. That's the average. It's a five-year average. Does a deal come in today that I can get an appointment for tomorrow and a contract by the end of the week and sold over the weekend? Absolutely, that has come in. Once, twice, sometimes three times a month. But we're doing 10, 12 deals sometimes. And the majority of them, 80, 20 principal guys, 80% of those deals came in from follow-up over a four to six month period. So follow-up is our third and final pillar. All three of these are as important as the next or the previous. Three things, marketing, making offers, and following up. That's really what wholesaling is. The simplest way to describe it. It's marketing, finding motivated sellers, using contracts to control properties by making offers, and then you follow up to keep that relationship going to see if they're more motivated later than they were when you originally talked to them. And motivation changes very rapidly. And over time, you're going to either call them or they're going to call you back and say, I'm ready. And that offer you made me now seems a lot more reasonable than it did four, five, six months ago because I thought that it was worth more, but I've come to my senses and I realize now that it's not. So can we do this deal? Guys, that's it. that is what is wholesaling. Um, I think, Dave, we left off one of the most fun parts of wholesaling, which is cashing the check. Cashing the check. When you get paid, you get paid well in this business, and that's why we like wholesaling. It is a job, but it is a great, high-paying job. Um, so, again, if you're interested in learning more, check out our free wholesale course, and uh, you guys can get started there. Thank you so much for joining us today. Signing off, guys. Thanks for listening to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, please visit freewholesalecourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. We would also appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Thank you in advance for your support. And remember, you make your money when you buy and you get paid when you sell. Now let's go build some wealth.